But I want to come to the fact that in the United States, almost everybody's had a lot of lenalidomide when they progress, and they're often on lenalidomide when they progress. Yeah. So how do we translate all these trials with lenalidomide at relapse into our practice? And yeah. Jane, you've explored pomalidomide at least in combination with carfilzomib. Yeah, no, it's, it's and great. And I think also with uh, panabinistone, right? Uh, not with Sorry, panabinistone. With yeah, well, not with exasmib, but we've looked at it with uh, carfilzomib um, and okay, pomalidomide. Sorry. And so I think that's a very relevant clinical question that we see commonly, and that's going to be what we all see in practice. That's what everybody sees in the kind of globally. As patients are getting imid-based therapy with lenalidomide up front um, and then progressing. And then so some of these trials don't necessarily apply to that. And so I think pomalidomide is a very potent uh, imid that's very active in that setting. The challenge is it's about a 30% response rate in you know, revlimid refractory patients. And so trying to find strategies to improve that response rate is going to be critically important. And so we, uh, we did a, a trial uh, with a number of colleagues with carfilzomib, pomalidomide, dexamethasone, potentially combining the more potent proteome inhibitor and a very potent imid. And we saw, a, a, number one, that is very well tolerated. So you can combine carfilzomib 27 milligrams per meter squared in the standard schedule and pomalidomide 4 milligrams. Uh, and the response rates uh, were around 70% um, in that setting. We were truly relevant, refractory. Um, as well as Velcade Refractory. So I think it's a very promising combination and a very active combination uh, that we use frequently in the Revlimid Refractory and patient and population. And in fact, in my own practice, I know that it's become my first relapse regimen. Essentially, you know, people are coming in now, they've had VRD transplant, lenalidomide or lenalidomide and, Vel and Velcade maintenance. And when they relapse, I've been using your regimen hmm. um, uh, almost as my go-to treatment. Mm. But Paul, you've had a lot of experience with pomalidomide yeah. too and some of the combinations yeah. coming along. Tell us about those. Well, we, 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 you know, I completely agree with Jason. I think what we're very pleased with with pomalidomide is it's an excellent partner drug. Um, it, it's it, also the most potent of the image, is it, that correct? It's absolutely correct. And I think the other thing is that we find it very, it partners beautifully with carfils, it partners beautifully with bortezomib. We're able to recapture response uh, even though they've you know, had multiple prior lines of therapy, et cetera. And the tolerability profile of POM I think is, is particularly encouraging. There have been no surprises and it's uh, I think very well tolerated in renal disease as well um, and it clearly uh, I think is an image of choice actually in that setting now that we've got more information. But I think what's also very exciting um, uh, Keith at this meeting is there's data now on pomalidomide and exazomib. That's the one. Uh, that and right? Absolutely yeah. that's that's our alliance study. It's right. led by my colleague Peter Voorhees who's done a beautiful job with this early phase study and it's moving now into a randomized phase two. But the bottom line is Pete's showing beautiful tolerance and at the same time excellent activity in refractory patients um, because the eligibility was the POM label, i.e. Re refractory patients going into the trial. So that's one. And then I think it's perfect to have Ajay here because you can talk to us a little bit about pomalidomide and daratumumab. Let's that's hold that thought because we're going to yeah. finish our discussion this morning with daratumumab. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Okay, but fair enough. One thing we should perhaps do is let's talk about the uh, uh, Typical indication for a patient receiving pomalidomide today, and uh, Paul, you're very familiar with this drug. Tell us, who, who's receiving pomalidomide in your clinic? In our practice, it's basically after one line of therapy that typically incorporates proteasome inhibition and immunomodulation. So a patient, for example, who's on lenalidomide maintenance and progresses, because we know pomalidomide can overdrive lenalidomide failure, we're very comfortable um, offering patients pomalidomide-based therapy. Now, classically, we do that in the protocol setting. Having said that, um, we're also very comfortable, um, in, again, in line with the label, um, using it in that early, early relapse setting. Dr. Shah? No, I think similar. I think that uh, we're using pomalidomide in combination in uh, the refractory setting, um, so either with bortezomib or carfilzomib. Sagar, what, what about then, Emery, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we really like uh, the use of POM, particularly after second autos, if people get a second auto as a maintenance strategy. Good point. Uh, but, but certainly uh, the, the POM antibody combinations for us are sort of the, the key drivers right now. POM antibody combinations. So you would go to uh, POM, and, POM and what? DARA, right now, until we mm. have data we on HELLO. POM DARA to the map. Nothing to add. I agree with everything that's been said. POM usually use it in combination with a third agent. And I think I already said earlier that really when my patients are coming on relapsing after transplant and lenalidomide maintenance, that pomalidomide, either with carfilzomib or bortezomib, has become our standard of care. So what I'm hearing is pomalidomide is a very potent drug. Mm -hmm. It works sometimes when you're refractory to lenalidomide. 
you can combine it with lots of different Fair drugs, enough. right? Yes, Anything it hasn't been, it hasn't been combined with elotuzumab yet, but there's no reason to think it wouldn't be combinable. It is. Been, it is, and it's trials. being studied. The it's trials trial. just mm -hmm. opened. Yep. And exactly you know, right. it, it's uh, it's the main side effect. It seems to me is neutropenia. Uh, what about dosing? We start at four. Do you think three or two is the drop down two dose, or where, where do you? What do you do in your own practice? Um, personally, yeah, I will start at two or three if I'm worried about that, a patient. Oh, but yeah. I'm very comfortable going in at four with most patients with adequate uh, marrow reserve, and actually also in the. Context Has it been of an issue with combinations that neutropenia becomes more of a problem? In which combinations? With well, let's say carfilzomib and. and yeah. So we've seen that it's actually been very well tolerated in that mm -hmm. setting. So we haven't seen much cytopenias in that setting. Even in that late line setting where these are you know, meeting the five or six lines mm -hmm. of prior therapy, um, we haven't seen those degree of cytopenias or dose reductions necessary. And we talked about uh, the fact that lenalidomide, you need to be a bit cautious with dosing and renal failure. Is that true for pomalidomide too, or is that uh, different? So, you know, there's a trial, MMO8, uh, which we're leading, um, looking at pomalidomide and renal failure. And uh, there's another study in Europe that's going to be presented here at ASH really showing that you can use pomalidomide very safely in uh, renal failure, similar to thalidomide, where it's not necessarily renally clear. Including dialysis? Or? Including dialysis, and that you can continuously dose these patients, which is very distinctly different than lenalidomide, which you have to be careful with. So I think that's very uh, important data for our patients with renal dysfunction. I think one thing to consider is, given the difference in patient populations where POM is used relative to len, for the community practice, again, you know, you may need to check blood counts more than, even though the you, you typically see these imid patients once a month, given the risk of neutropenia, and almost a third of patients in POMDEX do require growth factor support. It may be prudent to check at least the cycle one, some mid-cycle uh, mid checks of the blood counts to ensure that patients aren't getting too cytopenic. In your carfilzomib POM, uh, pomalidomide trial, what was the toxicity profile like in terms of, there's been a little bit of noise around the kidney and the endothelial system in, in carfilzomib treated patients, is that being? So we didn't see a, a signal um, in the carfilzomib pomalidomide combination that was unexpected. And so uh, we didn't have Unexpected meaning you still saw some rare events or not? We not saw any. some rare events. Um, we treated over 100 patients in that trial, so I think there's a few cases on there, but nothing that was unexpected. Anybody had any, uh, we, we uh, anybody, any other comments to make about any of these issues before we move on? I mean, I think, um, you know, the, the thoughts that POM is a great partner, I think, is, is right on. And, and its ability to enhance immune function probably much more potently than lenalidomide, I think, probably does bridge to where I suspect you're trying to go next, which is adding it to, to, to DARE.